And in the season finale, Sam and Miguel continue to try to get their groups to realize they need to work together. But there's so much bad blood in the room that a couple of the Eagle fan kids get up to leave. And Dimitri actually is the one to stand up and say, we look like assholes right now. I mean, Cobra Kai literally became a group of assholes. But if we don't work together to fight them, we're bigger assholes than they are. And that speech actually worked. The group sits down and starts hashing out some plans to merge dojos. Really only agreeing that they're going to train at Miyagi-Do because the public park isn't really cutting it. But then Bert hears a cat outside. And as we learned earlier, Bert is an animal lover, so he goes to investigate. The only problem is Sam doesn't own a cat. And out of nowhere, Bert ends up flying through the window. Because somehow the Cobra Kai kids learned about this gathering. And they end up coming in and trying to finish this thing once and for all. This includes Tori, Eli, Kyler, the whole gang. And I just want to point out, this is literally a home invasion. Like, where are these kids' parents? What are they teaching them? Anyway, you've got Kyler matched up against Miguel. Tori is hunting down Sam, and Eli is fighting off anyone. Although, when he sees Kyler beating up Miguel, he starts to have second thoughts. And it comes full circle for him when he sees a couple of members of Cobra Kai who have Dimitri in a compromising position, and they tell him, hey Eli, free shot. And he starts remembering everything that's gone down. And really the person who he's become, and he doesn't like it. So he ends up fighting them off and saving Dimitri. Walking up to him and apologizing for everything that's happened and saying, hey, you want to help me fight these guys? And Dimitri says, yeah. The two team up and they're fighting off a bunch of Cobra Kai people. And finally, the tide is shifting. And that includes Miguel who is getting the shit beat out of him by Kyler, but then he remembers everything he's gone through. And all the things that he's learned in karate finally click again, and he ends up beating up Kyler pretty good. Sam, though, is going through a panic attack. She's running away from Tori and flees into the dojo, but Tori is right behind her. And Tori ends up kicking her in the face, saying to Sam, you know, I really thought you'd put up a harder fight than this. But Sam is just frozen still. And Tori, being the little psychopath that she is, grabs nunchucks and is ready to bash in Sam's face. But she misses her face, and it's a picture of Mr. Miyagi that falls to the ground, and when Sam sees it, she remembers what her dad said about fear and about standing up to it. So Sam ends up dodging Tori, fighting her off, and having a kendo stick really close to her head. She shows restraint, but tells her, I'm not scared of you. You know where to find me. I'm right here. And that's when Eli, Miguel, Dimitri, they walk in and tell Tori, the fight's over. You can leave now. But Tori can't believe that Eli switched allegiances, calling him a traitor and telling him, you better watch your back. Although Dimitri tells her he doesn't need to, Because he's got friends to do that for him. Now, while all of that is going on in the LaRusa house, Johnny, Allie, Daniel, and Amanda are getting caught up at this country club party. They're reminiscing about Daniel and Allie's relationship, Johnny and Allie's relationship, and Allie helps them realize that while they sit here and act like they hate each other, they're a lot alike. And the things that they don't like in one another is actually a trait of themselves. But the LaRussos take off, and that leaves just Allie and Johnny. Although, Allie nips that in the bud, because Allie snuck off with Amanda and found out about Carmen. And Johnny admitted to Allie earlier in the day that he screwed up every meaningful relationship he's ever had, including the one with Allie. And it seems like Allie's not ready to let him screw up the one with Carmen, telling him, you can't live in the past, you've got a future ahead of you. And the two seem to have a lot of fun that day, but they're going to leave it at that, leave it as friends. And Johnny heads home, realizing that, yeah, Carmen's the one for me. Knocks on her door, but when she answers it, something is clearly wrong. And that's when the door opens further, and you see Miguel's bashed up face. Miguel tells Johnny what happened, and Johnny heads on over to Cobra Kai to confront Kreese. But when he gets there, he is shocked, because Robbie is training with Kreese in a Cobra Kai gi. Now, Kreese is pumped. He's like, all right, Johnny, here we go. You're back. Three generations of Cobra Kai. We're gonna run shit. And even Robbie says, you know, Dad, he just wants the best for you. But Johnny ain't here to hear that. And he starts throwing haymakers at John Kreese. He gets the best of him, and he's bashing Kreese's face in. And Robbie actually has to pull him off. And when he does, Johnny yells at him, saying, you don't get it, man. You can't trust this guy. And Robbie laughs at him, saying, what, and I can trust you? You know, all those years that you weren't there, I blame myself. But Sensei Kreese is right. I can't be my own worst enemy but you can. And then Robbie starts fighting his dad. Johnny tells him, kid, I'm not going to fight you. But Robbie persists. And Johnny uses self-defense, but he ends up spinning Robbie into a bunch of lockers and Robbie gets knocked out. Johnny's checking on him, trying to revive him because Robbie is unresponsive when John Kreese grabs one of the daggers off the walls and hits Johnny in the head with it. Looks like he's about to stab Johnny when Daniel shows up because Daniel showed up with the same intentions that Johnny did. And Daniel ends up saving Johnny. Although, Kreese does end up tackling him through a window. And when that happens, Kreese grabs one of the shards of glass 
and tells Daniel it's time for you and Mr. Miyagi to be reunited. But that's when Daniel implements the pressure point technique, leaving Chris completely immobilized. Although all of this shit seems to be the last straw, and Daniel's ready to do the same thing he did with Chosen. Live or die, man! But that's when he's interrupted by Miguel and Sam. Both Johnny and Daniel tell Chris, stay away from our kids, but Chris says, eh, it's a free country. And Johnny says, not for you. Cobra Kai's done. But Kreese is able to get them to agree to a deal. Settle this thing at the All Valley. If Kreese's team loses, he'll leave. And both Daniel and Johnny agree to that, saying, we're not going to lose. But Robbie has since woken up, walks out, and tells both Johnny and Daniel to get out of there. And then him and Kreese walk back into Cobra Kai and continue their training. The next day, both Miyagi-Do and Eagle Fang join forces for the first time, becoming miyagi eagle fang Do. It's a working title. I might have just made that up. But they go through the first training session with both Daniel and Johnny leading the way. Now in this episode, you also get the rest of the backstory on what happened with Kreese in Vietnam. He got taken to a POW camp where they were squaring off the soldiers to fight to the death. They were on a plank, and if you fell into this pit, you were done. Their captain continued to rail against John Kreese, blaming him for everything that happened. But also telling him, look around, man. I'm not the captain anymore. It's every man for themselves in this situation. The guy really became a roaring asshole, pointing out who was going to live and who was going to die. When the Viet Cong come to square off two more people, the captain is the first one. But then they pick another guy to go against the captain who is just not mentally prepared for battle. And that's when Kree steps up, agreeing to fight him. As they're walking to the plank, the captain is laughing, saying, Hey, I'm not going to lose. I have something to live for. You don't. And he reveals to Kreese that they got word that Kreese's girlfriend had died in a car accident. They kept it from Kreese because they didn't want him distracted. But the captain says, huh, a lot of good that did. And Kreese can't believe that this is true. But he doesn't really have time to reflect on it because he's got a battle to the death. And it looks for a while that the captain is going to end up winning. But Kreese ends up stabbing him with bamboo. And he's got the captain dangling over this snake pit. When all of a sudden, the cavalry comes. U.S. Army has shown up and they're bombing the area. And it looks like the POWs are going to get out of there. Even the captain looks up at Kreese and says, All right, man, this is over. Pull me up. But this is the first sign of Kreese's no mercy. He steps on the captain's hands and lets the captain fall into the pit in a scene that is eerily similar to Miguel falling in the end of season two. Kreese then walks over and lets all the soldiers out. But the soldier that Kreese volunteered to go for ends up giving him a huge hug and thanking him, saying, You saved my life. Anything you need, man, for the rest of your life, I got you. So after this brawl that took place at the Cobra Kai dojo, Kreese ends up calling up that guy and telling him, It's been a long time. And that is the end of season three of Cobra Kai. What an amazing season, truly. It was awesome. Thank you so much, though, for watching this recap and getting to this point. Please consider subscribing to the channel. Like this video if you liked it. Hit thumbs down if you don't. And please be nice in the comments section. I am not good at karate. I'm not going to hunt you down like Tori and beat you up. I'm more like Eli and less like Hawk. Mean comments make me feel bad. So just be nice. Once again, thank you so much for checking this out. And if you know somebody that needs this, send it their way.